Hello, welcome back to AG Engineering. I'm continuing with those um, crankcases today off the BSA. Um, thanks to Rob for reminding me I've got to put the circlip groove in before I move the uh, the cases off the mill. Um, the circlips came this morning, a um, couple of them. They always seem very big. Um, you don't measure a circlip by its diameter. So for a for this case, the the forty seven mil OD bearing, a forty seven millimeter circlip isn't forty seven millimeters OD. It's sort of about fifty millimeters OD to allow for the um, it seated into the groove. I've just had a look in machinery's handbook. Um, trying to find circlips, no it's not under that section trying to find snap rings, no it's not under that section and just ended up thumbing through and I think it's called retaining rings so uh, yeah, that's following American books for you how to put them in the circlips uh, 50.8 it says for the uh, the groove depth and 47 millimeters is classed as like circlip in in hole or circular in bore or something like that. If I remember to, I'll do a, a copy of the page and post that at some point in the video. Uh, so yeah, we want to go around about fifty and a half millimeters, say, uh, as a ballpark figure. So half that for our um, hot, taking that away from forty-seven, sort of four point four, say. So on about two point two mil depth of cut for our circlip. Um, I've been grinding up a tool uh, this morning for that out of a bit of um, Presto cobalt steel which takes a bit of doing um, out there with the angle grinder. Uh, my other tool I got was a little bit too small it's in the box down there I was going to get it. So I'll get set up and uh, we'll go through the process of uh, how I do circlips, whether it's circlip grooves, whether it's right or wrong or not, I don't know. But uh, I'll give it a go and we'll put a circlip in. Now, thinking about this bearing, um, I was thinking that maybe the NKIB ball thrust version of the bearing probably moved due to uh, end load or movement of the crank. So that was why I was thinking of retaining this one with a circlip. But having said that, this hasn't got a ball thrust. So the likelihood of it moving in a case is quite low. But we'll put a circlip in anyway. There's room for it and uh, it's kind of belt and braces on the, on the other side. But probably not strictly necessary to be honest. I'll get over to the mill. Get some, uh, get some measuring set up done. The width of our bearing is 17 millimetres and it's going up to that shoulder at the bottom down there if this shows up in the uh, in the video. So I've ground the, the tip of my cutting tool there to um, I think it's just a fraction over two millimetres wide, uh, just slightly wider than the uh, if I'm out of the way, just slightly wider than the there it is than the circlip uh, to make sure we've got a, a wide enough groove for it to sit in. You don't want it too wide so it rattles about or too tight that it won't go in properly. Um, the next stage for me, because that's two millimeters wide, I'll go down to that shoulder until it stops there. I'll zero the digital readout up up here on the uh, on the mill, bring it up 17 millimetres plus another say half a millimetre for a little bit of clearance between the bearing and the circlip. So I'll just tap that up until we're about there, that'll do lock lock the quill well enough I'm just going to put power on to 
turn the speed down. Forgive me all getting in the way. There's ever awkward getting around the camera. But at the moment there is there is no cut on hardly at all. It's just scratching a little bit over one side. You probably heard it. So ideally I would be better off with the with the boring head I've got that's um, automatic feed to feed outwards while you're going. But that's quite a big chunky boring head and awkward to get into these little spaces like that. Plus the boring bar size is an 80mm shank and I haven't got any spare um, steel. I've only got the couple of cutters that came with the kit with that. I've got another indexable indexable cutter on the way for it but uh, most of my toolings for this um, this manual boring head so what I'll do is I'll take a, a reference roughly of where I am on the little scale there um, this is in thousands so half thousands so I'll move that in um, obviously for a millimeter depth of cut I'll get two millimeters OD. If that makes sense, and um, I'll work out from that convert to metric and get my uh, get my groove going, so to speak. So bear with me. I'm going to make a little start off camera, so I'm not working around tripods and things, and then I'll bring you back when we've just got to get going. Okay, I've just been studying how to um, to do this measure in the easy way. I, I, I was watching a Mr. Pete 222 video earlier where he makes a, a, a dial test indicator holder for one of these type of heads. Um, and I'm going to get around to making one of them one day. But for now, we haven't got that during this job. But if I measure that shoulder there, if we can see that, between the moving dovetail part and the body... With just with the little calipers there, and I've zeroed them. Then, as I move out that that way, as I move across, I'll better measure this this depth. So I'm going to do it that way, just to make life a little bit easier. So I've just scratched a line. If we can see that in the video, just about trying to. Look at the camera just about there, you just see a little shiny bit. Um, and what I'm doing is I'll put a little bit of cut on, only a tiny bit because you're digging into the material. I've left the mill powered and I'm just on the variable speed control here. And I'll just do a couple of revolutions. like that, a few revolutions and slow it down to zero, put a little bit of cut on Let it do a few revolutions, a little bit more cut on With this I've got, see it's on um, a three phase inverter, it's a three phase motor powered off an inverter which is powered by ordinary mains 230 volt in this country. Um, and when I got the machine you couldn't wire it for, in, in simple terms, you couldn't wire it for the inverter. I had the motor rewound so that I could alter the internal wiring configuration of the motor to allow me to power it off an inverter. And it's off a little tiny inverter in the cabinet. I remade the controls. Well, there was no control on the mill when I got it at all, actually. So I made a little control box that's just up here, down to the inverter. Uh, 
and gave myself variable speed. The um, I mean, you could say, why not just change the motor? It's a it's an imperial flange mount motor, and it's 900 rpm. It's a six pole motor, so it's uh, quite a rare thing. So it was easy to have it rewound. Fortunately, there's a little place not too far from me called Albion Power, who uh, down there does a really good job. Um, I know Dan, I worked, worked with him a bit when I was at the steel place. Um, I mean, I took this down way, way before I, I worked at the steel place. And, uh, yeah, got it rewound. And it's, uh, it's made a real good job. It's made a real nice mill. Actually, it's in, uh, in good condition, which I think I mentioned before. It's sort of it's a a CAV mill, which is actually a tool room mill, and uh, so it's a very short table. But it's also got a head that you can tilt on a on a handle in the same way as you can move the tables. You can actually do sort of dishes if you want to with it. Although, well, I've got the head trammed in nicely, so I haven't actually. Uh, I don't like moving it unless I absolutely have to. If I have to do anything at angles, I've got a, a bigish angle plate that I uh, use. So that's all I'm doing with this. Just keep putting a little bit more cut on. Bring it around. So we'll come back when I've got uh, when I've got the groove done. Right, a gripe. Pluses and minuses of some of the, some modern digital calipers. This one, when it powers down automatically, and you power it back on, it goes back to zero. And if you've moved it or disturbed it, you've lost your place. Bugger. Remeasure. So now I've got to measure the, the groove and I just realise what I need is some internal groove uh, groove calipers. Um, yeah, always an excuse to buy more tools. Who was it? Dean in Oxfordshire. Yeah, it'll always keep you poor, Dean. Mm, right, I'll find some little internal calipers. I thought I got the answer. I've, I've got one of these caliper accessory kit things, but it's too bloody big by a long way. It's big and bulky and cumbersome. So uh, that ain't going to work. The other thing I've got is one of these um, calipers. They're everywhere now. This is a more than right one, but they're really, yeah, they're not very good things. They're just rebranded, made in China. Horrible things, really. But I, I might have to just file the tips down here to, to get in. I've never used this. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So it's just been relegated to the back of the cabinet sort of thing. See what I can do with this for measuring that internal groove. After various faffings about with different implements I can't um, find anything to get in there in that awkward space and measure so I've used me a bit of paper again and I've just sort of I won't get it in now but I've reset my zero effectively and I'm going off my uh, my dial so I'll go um, 40 thou off this which will give me um, a two mil bigger groove to start with and then we'll go from there right after many uh, trials and tribulations as close as I can measure I've gone around about two millimeters deep which is four millimeters overall which takes me to about 51 millimeters probably slightly under that 
So I'm just going to try a circle pin, and I've got um, I've got some little get this in the view. Let me just pan you out, zoom you out a little bit. I've got some marks. There's the circle at rest, if that makes any sense. Uh, and we can just about see that. I put a little blue mark on my on my circlet pliers. So if it's there, it's it's at rest. And if it's sort of at the next mark, it's got a little bit of tension on it when I put this in. So I'm trying to judge what it's like in the groove. So I'm trying to work around everything. Watch this go flying. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, right, that is difficult to see, that's probably two thirds Two thirds of the way across from my little marks, so it's sort of yeah, it's not under. It's about there. It's not under too much tension, but it's just sort of gripping in the in the groove a little bit, so it's not jangling about in there, and that's in. Lovely. I'm always a bit nervous we're doing circlet grooves. Um, the other one I want, didn't want to do was if we can see that on that side, just there, I, I can break through into that thread. I didn't want to do that because I've still got to get the grub screw in there. I mean, I could put the grub screw in, then put the circlet in after, and it'd sort of lock the grub screw in as well. But I wanted to be careful to avoid that and there isn't much meat there at all so that's good uh sir clips in and say probably not strictly necessary so uh choices kind of yours on that one if you're uh, if anybody's following this project to actually do the job right i'm just um Take all these bits out again and there's my very crudely ground tool for doing a circlet groove. So just add a bit of uh, a bit of presto cobalt steel in there. So it did the job. I'm going to drop the table down in a minute, but I just recheck my uh, my balls and everything again. Um, I'm just going to put a. I have a little mag magnetic back indicator I made a while ago. Um, I've been asked about this. It's just a, a piece of nylon block with uh, a couple of countersunk magnets in, and uh, it sits on the on the back of the mill there. That groove is actually from my well, there's a big lathe, might be a big lathe for sitting on the um, bed up against the saddle when that moves. Uh, I just put it at the back there and set a zero on it. We'll get a zero, set a zero on it. Um, it's just down there, and then I can drop my knee down and uh, come back to that point if I have to. Well, that's what we're looking like so far. Um, I've just run round there with a little bit of. Abronet cloth, um, I've not used it before, the um, 
what did I say? Alan Milliard. He was doing a a Kawasaki six cylinder head, and he uh, seemed to uh, to like the Abernet cloth for lack of clogging on aluminium, and uh, yeah, it seems to work quite uh, quite good. I think it's primarily a woodworking thing. I'm not sure, but it, uh, I've just defuzzed round where that circlet groove is. So just a couple of wipes. Right, with the circlet groove done, I've uh, took everything off the mill. As you can see, I'm just having a bit of an assessment of where to go next with this. Um, I've just had a cup of tea. Um, hello, Michael. I'm uh, still here. Just done that circlet groove. Thanks for your, uh, your comment. I've got to plug those... Um, additional holes up on this um, from this press relief valve side I'll bring you in closer in a minute Bef I've got to do that before I go any further and before the bearing goes in which will probably get in tomorrow all being well um, as if you've been reading the comments you've probably seen the crank I've got is not strictly right well it's nothing like right for these crank cases this is a very early A7 long stroke crank I've got. Um, I didn't realise at the time I, I bought it. I bought it sort of blind and went and fetched it. And Oh, oh well. It was very cheap though. Very cheap. Um, and it's not in very good condition. The drive side main you can throw on from the other side of the, uh, the room. So that could be another little sub uh, repair. Doing a sleeve or something for that. Um, but it'll do to prove the concept as I've mentioned in some of the comments so I've just got it sat on some blocks the usual uh, core, core ramp ones um, at, a, at the right height and I'm just seeing sort of where the crank lands up that's if I zoom you in a little bit that's with it up to that side of this side of the case so that's as far as it can sit that way uh, so with the bearing in the bearing will be behind the lip um, and if the crank comes this far then there isn't a problem the standard uh, crank pinion can go on and everything can remain the same in the in the timing side here without having to make spaces and the such like that the if you do the NKIB bearing and you've got to lock it up to oh, demonstrate it you've got to put a spacer in to hold the bearing the two inner bits of the bearing together then it creates a little bit more work um, the sl the inner sleeve going on when that goes on the crankshaft I'm actually I may have to make a spacer thinking about it I might have to space this back and front so it's locked up by the um, the crankshaft pinion but I won't I shouldn't have to modify the crankshaft pinion so it'll probably just a couple of little little spacer rings for that. So we'll we'll judge that one when we get to it. Um, and that's about it so far, I think. I'm going to get uh, I'll put that bearing in the freezer. That uh, I need a roller in the freezer. And um, tomorrow I'll get these cases. Get them them holes plugged up whether it's with grub screws or aluminium screws or something along that line loctited in and uh, we'll, we'll carry on tomorrow um, yeah fingers crossed everything's kind of uh, coming together so I'll carry on tomorrow um, all being well if nothing else crops up and uh, I shall see you 
on the next episode. Bye for now.